are getting like scientific today. I feel like I did my research and now I've got to present it to the class. Like it's taking me all the way back to college. Hey YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel. It's Alyssa Marie here in case you are new. If you are new, welcome to my channel. Please do make sure that you are subscribed before we get started today. That way you'll be notified every single time a new video drops and I promise you will not regret it. So today, I wanna get into some discussion on glycerin. So I've done my research, I've learned a little thing, and honestly, it seems like glycerin could be like a make it or break it type thing for your hair, depending on some certain factors. So we're gonna get into the details. I'm gonna share with you everything that I've learned and kind of make it simple and easy to understand. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna be sharing some glycerin-free products that you can consider using as well. Let's get into it. So you must be wondering what the heck is glycerin because I sure was when I first heard anything about this. We always talk about like alcohols and silicones and stuff on here, but never glycerin. So this was honestly like a first time thing, the first time I'd ever heard of glycerin. So I decided to do some research. My two main resources were Naturally Curly, which is an awesome blog. If you are a curly girl, definitely check them out. And then also Essence had an article all about glycerin as well. So I'll make sure both of those resources are tagged below in the description box just in case you guys want to check them out. So firstly, glycerin itself is basically like a colorless, odorless, thick kind of liquid and it's used in so many different ways, sometimes used in foods, sometimes used in cosmetics, and it's also used in natural hair products. So when it's used in natural hair products, it acts as a humectant, which is something that draws moisture into the hair. So when you hear humectant, just think about moisture. Glycerin is sometimes also known as glycerol, so if you see that on the back of your products, it's the same kind of thing. So glycerin can be natural or synthetic, so you can derive it naturally from plants and vegetables by using their fats, or it can just be made chemically. So basically how glycerin itself works within natural hair products is that it pulls moisture from the atmosphere and brings it into your hair. So it helps to keep your hair nice and moisturized. And y'all know when your curly hair is moisturized, it's nice and defined, right? So it can also cause some really nice curl definition. On the other hand, it can also work in the opposite way. So for example, if you live in a super hot and dry climate, and you put a bunch of glycerin heavy products in your hair and go outside, what that glycerin can then do is actually pull moisture out of your hair and back into the air and then leave you with some dry frizzy curls. When I first learned this, I was like, what? That is so crazy to think that like one little ingredient within a product can be that active and do that, you know? So it's really not a matter of is glycerin bad or good for curly hair. It's more of when should you be using glycerin products? So as you can tell, this ingredient is pretty active. If you use glycerin purely on its own and boom, just slap it into your hair, it can actually be very, very harsh and just kind of just pull all the moisture out of your curls and just leave them super, super dry. But when it's diluted and mixed into products, it can obviously be very beneficial depending again on what your climate is like. So basically climate is gonna be your first consideration when you're thinking about like what products should you use. I then also learned that glycerin can also help to accelerate the fading process of colored hair. And you know me, I've got some little Pintura highlights, so I was like, why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? So based on my little bit of research, so basically if you have fresh dye in your hair, even if it's permanent dye, you are gonna wanna wait like at least one to two weeks before you start using products with glycerin in it. Just in speaking about how active that product works in our hair to pull moisture out or pull moisture in, it can also start to help pull those color molecules or whatever you wanna call them off of your hair and then accelerate that whole fading process. Based on what I was reading online, if it's a permanent dye after that one to two week period, your hair has kind of healed itself, everything has been like sealed, the color is now sealed onto your hair, and then after that, those glycerin products are not really gonna affect the color, but if you have a temporary dye, then it will definitely increase that whole fading process that everybody tries to avoid. So if you have permanent dye, wait and then use those glycerin products later. If you have semi-permanent dye, don't use glycerin products at all. So once I read all of this and absorbed all this information, I was like, wait a minute, so have I been using glycerin heavy products? Like what is the deal with this? Like this is the first time I'm hearing about it. And so I was like, all right, let me go check all my products. I was shook. So many of my products, 
not only have glycerin in there, but glycerin was like the second or third ingredient. So you know it was jam packed full of glycerin. The ingredients lists are listed in order of amount. So if you see water first, that product is made up of mostly water. So when I saw like glycerin in like the first and second ingredients, I was like, dang, this is like basically glycerin in a bottle. And I had no idea about glycerin, what it was, how it could act in my hair. I think I kind of got lucky because as y'all know, I'm from the Cayman Islands. I only just recently moved to Atlanta. Um, but in the Cayman Islands, we are hot and humid 100% of the time. So I think that the glycerin has probably been working really well in my curls and I just haven't even known why or like what it is that's helping me with my curl definition. But in that kind of climate, as I was saying, that glycerin is going to be very beneficial for your curls. So basically to summarize all that information, there are two things that you need to consider. First is the climate. So if it's cold, humid, usually like the winter months, then glycerin is usually really, really great and beneficial for curly hair. On the opposite end, usually in the more warmer months, spring, summer, it's a lot hotter and drier outside, that's when you kind of want to turn to your glycerin-free product. The second consideration is hair color. If you're wearing semi-permanent dye in your hair but you still don't want that color to strip as yet, use glycerin-free products. If you're like me and you have permanent dye, you might want to use glycerin-free products for those first two weeks or so, and then after that you can go ahead and use glycerin based on what your climate might be looking like. Alright class, are you with me? Okay, so like I was saying when I was checking out my products, the majority of them had glycerin and a lot of glycerin in them. But there were like a handful that actually were glycerin free, which I was like, ooh, and kind of like looking back, I'm like, wow, that made a lot of sense, the results that I got from these products. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you some of my favorite glycerin free products that I've used and I actually really enjoy. So first up are these two kinky curly products. So first is their Not Today Leave-In Detangler. And then second is their curling custard. So this gel, I've said it before on here and also on Instagram, it is one of my favorite gels. Like it's one of those gels that I know that I can rely on. So if I need a bomb wash day of super defined curls to last me a full week, this is what I'm reaching for. It also works very well with the leave-in conditioner. And so I was kind of like, Surprised but not surprised to find out that these didn't have glycerin in them. They work so well, but they are not as moisturizing as some of my other gels are. And that's because there's no glycerin in them. But when my hair would dry, it would be fine. It would feel good. It wouldn't feel dry. It would look nice and shiny. It would feel good. And it would be super, super defined. So this is definitely something that you can reach for more in the spring and summer when it's hotter and drier outside. Next up are these two products from Camille Rose. I'm always talking about Camille Rose. That's one of the brands that I have used ever since the very beginning of my natural hair journey. Just one of my OG favorite brands. So the two products of theirs that I have that are glycerin free are the Coconut Water Leave-In Detangling Hair Treatment and the Curl Maker, which I am always talking about. I was actually really surprised to hear that this didn't have glycerin in it because this is super, super moisturizing. My curls absolutely love this. Whenever my hair just feels very dehydrated, I reach for this leave-in and it's so Bomb. Curl Maker, y'all already know I talk about this all the time. I really genuinely love these two products. Next is the Curls Blueberry Bliss Leave-In Conditioner. I talk about this all the time too because this is another product that I have used since the very beginning of my natural hair journey. It works so well. I've said it before, but this is probably one of the most curl-defining leave-in conditioners that I have ever used. I love it. it. smells so good. It's actually obvious that glycerin is not the only ingredient that can give you moisture in your hair. So you don't have to rely on just glycerin products in order to get moisture in your hair. Because these are two bomb leave-in conditioners, super hydrating, and glycerin free. All right, and then my last product that I wanted to talk about is the Miel Brazilian Curly Cocktail Curl Mousse. So this is one of the first couple of mousse stylers that I have tried in my hair, and it was bomb. Like, I kind of really loved it from when I first tried it. Um, but I had no idea that it was actually glycerin free because at the time I had no idea about what glycerin was. So definitely another product that I am happy to reach for when it's a little drier outside. So yeah, that is basically it on glycerin and glycerin free products. I really hope you guys found this useful. If you have any more questions for me, go ahead and comment them below. I would love to get into more discussions about this kind of thing because it's really crazy to see how many different ingredients have different roles in a product and like 
majority of consumers don't even take a second to think about like what ingredients are in each product but it's clearly so important to get to learn and understand the ingredients that doesn't mean you have to become a scientist and get all anal about it but it's important to know the basics the alcohols the silicones and now the glycerin so if you did enjoy this educational style video let me know because we can keep these coming and also don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up and if you didn't subscribe in the beginning i'm judging and while i'm judging two more videos just popped up boom out of nowhere you can check those out too i'll catch y'all in the next one bye